Hello guys and welcome to another edition of Rage Against the Dice. Today we're clearly looking at The Walking Dead All Out War by Mantic Miniatures. Um, this is Safety Behind Bars, it's the prison expansion. Now I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, Kevin, this came out two years ago and you don't really cover The Walking Dead anymore, even though in the comments we keep telling you to cover The Walking Dead. Well, I'd love to say that I got sick of people in the comments telling me to play The Walking Dead. And so I've gone back to it, but that's not true. See, a lot of companies now, they're kind of rushing out solo rules for all their games. Oh, you can play this on your own. Still buy our models, still buy our models. It's partly fan service and it's partly cash grab, if we're honest. Let's face it, if there's five games out there that are solo play and five that aren't, you're more likely in this current climate to invest in the solo play ones. However... Mantic's full idea behind The Walking Dead All Out War from the start was that you could play it solo or you could play it multiplayer. And through that, I've remembered my love for The Walking Dead All Out War. I played a couple of games um, just to sort of kill some time and I was getting the hobby itch. And then I remembered just how much I love it. Plus then we've got this zombie project going on for um, after lockdown. And it made me want to just go back and cover all these old expansions that uh, a couple of them I've got sat there and I've never even taken, like, unboxed. And then there's this one, which was one I'd never bought, and it was bought for me um, as a well done for not having a nervous breakdown. Because I don't talk about it a lot, but I have bipolar, um, and as well as some other uh, mental issue stuff. And for whatever reason, people have worried about me through the pandemic that, you know, maybe I was going to have a breakdown, which is not true because mainly it's the outside world that causes my problems. So being in the house with my boys is like heaven to me. Um, my boys is in my children, not as in some sort of gangster term for like my testicles. Um, yeah. So that aside, I've been enjoying The Walking Dead All Out War and I'm, I've come back to it. So I thought... I'm going to do some unboxings. Uh, as I said, this one is Safety Behind Bars, uh, the prison expansion. I'm excited to look at it. Now, I will say from when I last did Walking Dead All Out War unboxings to now, I have learned a great deal <laughs> as I've done a fair few unboxings since then. One thing I've learned is that maybe naively I thought people just wanted to see the models. I've actually learned in most cases in unboxings, that's not the case. Most people want to see the cards and the other bits that come inside the box. Because when you go on the website, you can see the models. Um, obviously, little things like as they're molding, um, what do they look like in person compared to 3D renders do make a difference. But it's mainly things like looking at the cards and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the cards. We're going to have a quick flick through the rule book. We're not going to look at it all in detail because I want to cover that in a separate video. Come on, man. I need the views. I'm a, I'm a struggling furloughed. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, I will cover it in a separate video, but purely just because I want to deep dive into all the rules. Once I've unboxed them all, we'll go from the first book all the way through. Um, I do own them all as PDFs because at the moment, Mantic are having um, their open day sale or not open day sale, as it were, because you can't go to the open day. Definitely go to Mandic's website and check that out. I will put a link in the description below. They've got some really great deals. On top of that, they're also giving away a number of their rule books free. As I said, they're really, really pushing forward for people, you know, solo playing, reading through the rules, ready for when lockdown ends. It's smart. I mean, not just from a customer service point of view. It is brilliant customer service, of course, but from a business point of view. If you've sat and you've read through three or four of their rule books that were free, uh, now lockdown's coming out, you're going to be starting to think, oh, it's time to order some miniatures. Who was it who gave me free rules? Whose rules have I been reading and getting kind of obsessed with? So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to whip this stuff out of its packaging and then we're going to have a look at it in a breakdown fashion. So yeah, back in a second, guys. So yes, here we are in this set. As you can see, you get five miniatures. Black on grey. Perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, of that, there's Thomas, Axel, Andrew, Dexter and one Walker, I believe. Um, that would make sense. That's just how it works mathematically. Um, the walker is actually a really cool one. Um, 
he's in the full riot gear. Now we're going to look at the models separately and I'm going to put down a white background so you can actually see them in detail. So we're going to slide these models to one side for now. So those of you who are interested in seeing the models, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer. I'm not going to apologize about that. That's how we tantalize you here on the internet. Look at me pretending I actually know what I'm talking about. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to have a look at the cards. Um, as I said, there should be four cards in here. In fact, you get extra, so that's brilliant. So we'll have a look. So the first one is Dexter. Um, he comes in at 42 points. Uh, he's got three backpack carrying space, which of course this bit down yonder. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reposition the camera so you guys can see the cards a little bit better. Give me a second. Let's throw this out of the way. So yeah, that's a little bit better. Um, I mean, I'm... I, I can read it. So I can read it to you. So it'll be like a bedtime story, but no. So Dexter's a bruiser. Uh, his melee is one white, one red. And that's the dice that you would roll when doing a melee attack. I'm talking as if you know how to play The Walking Dead All Out War. If you don't, we have a how to play video. So I'll plug that as well. It always shows at the end of every video we do. So yeah. Um, yeah, so for shoot, he rolls one red die, and for defense, he rolls one white. He's got seven health in total, and he comes with his leader ability, Top Dog. Each turn, Dexter may roll a white die. He may distribute that many bonus actions freely between Andrew, Axel, and Thomas if they are in his group and have not yet activated, and a max of one each. So that's really good. Um, max on a white die, I want to say it's two. It's been a while. Well, it's not, well, it has been a while and it hasn't, but I think it's a two, yeah, because the blue's the only one with threes on. I may be wrong, and if I am, you'll correct me in the comments. But yeah, so that's really good. Uh, it gives them extra actions to be able to do things, uh, meaning that you don't necessarily have to run and then pick something up. You can do a, you know, a sneak, a sneak, and then pick something up. But it's a really good leader ability. Um, he's got special special rules, which is the muscle. If Dexter chooses to attack and is on the winning side in melee, his side inflicts one extra damage point against the enemy. Now, against walkers, that's not going to be a big deal. Um, but against humans, that is brilliant. It's a really, really good skill. So, yeah, he's a really decent leader. I'm going to slide him to one side. Up you go, Dexter, you cheeky salmon. Now, next one is Thomas. Ow, i just bang my hand. You guys can... Feel sorry for me if you want. Uh, let me know in the comments if you did feel sorry for me. But no. Um, yeah, so he's got a backpack of two. He costs 18 points to hire and he's a tactician. He comes with four health. Uh, he rolls one white in melee. He has no basic shoot. Bless him. And he has one red for defense. So yeah, his special rules are psychotic. At the start of his activation, after panic rolls, if there is an enemy survivor in Thomas's kill zone who is not currently at full health, his first action must be to move into contact with them if possible. So yeah, that's the thing. And then stab. Thomas may re-roll any of his melee attack dice when using weapon with a sharp keyword. So you want to give him pointy things. And I'm guessing in this big lump of equipment... Um, they'll be stabby, sharp things. Yeah. So the next one's Andrew, and he's a runner. He's going to cost you 21 points. Um, he's got a backpack space of two. And I... Oh, yeah, I said he's a runner. I haven't been covering their nerves. My apologies. So it's medium and medium, and this one's a low. So more easily startled. Um, yeah, like me when I get caught ordering stuff online in the middle of the night. Um... <laughs> Is that more miniatures? No, it's pawn. It's always miniatures. Um, so melee, one red die. Shoot, one white die. And defense, two red die. So he's cowardly, but with a decent-ish defense. Uh, four health, and he has nimble. At the start of a combat, Andrew may roll the uh, shield dice, which is the black die, um, on a shield, or the little star, he moves out of base contact and at least one inch is away from all current enemies by the shortest route possible, moving through models if necessary. So he's all about getting out of there before he gets splegged. And I like that. That's cool. Splegged is a northeast term. Uh, it means squashed. Um, yeah, you've learned something new today, if nothing else. Um, next up, we have Axel, who's got a backpack space of three, bless him. He costs you... 29 points. I think that's 29 points. I love The Walking Dead, but I really hate the cards. 
Uh, I don't. I like the look of the cards. It's either 29 or 20. Um, it's got a little cutty bit there, so I'm going to say 29. Again, you can correct me in the comments if you want. Um, but Axel's a support. He comes across with six health. Bless him. He has no special abilities, but he does have a bit of a catchphrase. I ain't stupid. I know I'm an outside here. Thing is, I'm just a man who made a mistake. I ain't a monster. And that's true. Axel's okay. Um, but yeah, he got one white for his melee, one red for shoot. Um, and then a white and a red for his defense, and his nerve is medium, so he's a he's a decent mid-level character. Now we have Carlos the Marksman. Now I've actually just painted up Carlos. Uh, yeah, because I like Carlos, and because I'm working through, as I said, all my survivors, and I will show you them in another video. I've actually finished off all the scavengers now. I know, hooray for me. So, Carlos, uh, this is hardened veteran version, so it's not the version you get um with his actual model he's a marksman he's cost you 34 points and he's got a backpack of three um his special rule is expert shot when carlos performs a ranged attack you may force the target to discard a cover die of their choice fair play um he's got medium nerve he's got a melee of red a shoot of one white one red and two defense dice which are both red so that's pretty good he's a really decent card um i like carlos i don't tend to play as the scavengers of course, you don't have to play sort of as one faction, but as the scavengers, I don't tend to play as them. That tends to be who Alan plays as. Um, I'm sure he's going to be really excited by this. He likes Carlos. Um, yeah, I'm saying I'm too much. I do apologize, guys. Right, and here we have out of control Carol. Uh, she's 19 point model or 10 point. No, she's <laughs> she's 19 point. I've, I've got it now. I think I've run that joke in the ground. Uh, she's a support character. She has no melee. She's got a shoot of one red and a defense of one white. She's got a medium nerve and four health. Now, she's got three special rules and she's got a backpack of two. So let's have a look at these special rules. So she has unstable at the start of each of Carol's activations before panic is rolled. Uh, roll a blue dice. This is how many actions Carol may take this turn. So she may end up getting more. She may end up getting less. But yeah, she's not going to get no actions because it's a blue die. So, so that's okay. She's vulnerable. If Carol is in the kill zone of a friendly model of the same faction, that model will not panic. So they're too busy protecting Carol. Oh, Carol of the comics. You are so not as good as Carol of the TV show. And it's rare that you can say that, really, because mainly the comic translates better. But yeah, I like Carol from the series. She's badass. And then irrational outbursts. At the end of each of Carol's activation... Uh, roll the black shield die, and on a black, on a blank, sorry, she creates noise. Oh, Carol, when will you ever stop being a problem for us? But yeah, so on a shield, she's fine. On a black, she's going to create some noise. She's going to pull a walker towards her. God bless her. But yeah, so they're the character cards you get with it. I've always been a fan of this, actually, with Mantic, that yes, you get the characters for the models, but you also get some extra characters as well. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to have a look at the cards, the event cards. That was the word I couldn't think of. And we'll see what you get in here and see how these are going to add to our game. Now, that's an armoured walker. So an armoured walker is different and it costs different as well. It's 20 points. So let's see how armoured walkers differ. Um, they've still got a melee of one red, of course, but they've got a defense of two red. Now, not only do I have, obviously, the armored walkers from the Walking Dead All Out War, I also have some from that other Walking Dead set I've got, so I can take advantage of armored walkers fairly quickly. But they have a helmet, which means they ignore uh, one critical from each attack roll made against the walker, so you have to get two attack rolls to kill them, which is really tough. And then they come with the same outnumbering rule that all walkers come with, which is brilliant. So, yeah, it's nice that we've got an extra, a different walker within the game. And then these are the cards. It comes with four different ones. So you're not getting a lot of extra. But as it says on the box and on the website, you do need the base game to play anyway. So this is no hope. It remains in play and it's a plus one threat. So, all quiet and low threat. In the action phase, all survivors must roll the shield die, or the black die, and when they are activated. On a shield, they act normally. On a blank, they treat their nerve as one level lower than normal. 
so they can panic. Um, now, the medium to high threat, all survivors treat their nerve as one level lower than normal. And, and at the start of the next event phase, discard this card. So you don't need to roll for it. It just happens on a higher threat level. So that's a really nice card. I like the fact that it remains in play. It adds a different dynamic to the game. Um, hold defences, plus one threat. So all quiet and low threat. The player with initiative chooses an eligible walker in contact with a scenery piece. Uh, with a collapse rule, such as a fence, all eligible walkers within eight inches of the chosen walker and on the same side of the fence move forward the closest part of the fence. If there are no walkers in contact with a fence, the player with initiative moves one eligible walker of their choice towards a fence. Medium threat as low threat but resolve the effect twice and high threat is as low threat but resolve the effect three times. So it's interesting, it adds a dynamic, and as I said, the collapse rules in there, and we will look at that when we have a flip through the book. The next one is Armoured Assault. It doesn't put your threat level up at all, but all threat levels. Two armoured walkers enter play and are moved towards the closest survivor. If you do not have enough armoured walkers to fill this card, place as many as you can and then add one to the threat level. So because you get one in this box, as standard, you wouldn't be able to do it. However, most of... The expansions for that particular wave come with a walker that's armoured, I believe. I wouldn't want to 100% swear to it, but I'm pretty confident. I know I have extra armoured walkers, and I've bought multiple from that wave, so that's probably where. Um, and then short circuit, which remains in play. All threat levels. A power surge resets all systems, and the prison goes dark. No survivors may run or shoot while inside, and all interior doors are opened. Walkers are placed into any newly revealed rooms instead of placing them when survivors enter. The number of walkers placed in each room depends on the current threat level and you roll a die for each. So on an all quiet or low it's red, on a medium it's white and on a high it's blue. And then at the start of the next event phase you discard this card. So that's really, really cool. I love the idea of that and I like that the buildings and stuff come into play. We've not played a game yet so far that uses the interior rules because we hadn't done an unboxing video for this yet. Um, and I didn't want to get ahead of ourselves. I said I picked up the PDFs on a whim last time they were cheap. They're currently going cheap again, so people might want to go and slide in and pick those up. Um, but yeah, so let's have a look at the equipment now. First thing I'm going to get is two more Mantic points. You're slowly getting me towards them. <laughs> couple of characters and bits I need that I don't already have because I, I don't tend to attend events because the weekends before lockdown were mainly when I spent with my children because although I live with them, um, I work full time. So <laughs> the weekends are, are kind of special in that regard and it's the same for a lot of people. I'm not like saying I, I'm in any way special, um, although I am in a, yeah... I'm going to shut up now. Anyway, let's look at these equipments. So we've got the riot baton, and that costs you 10 points. Uh, it's a bludgeon weapon, and it's dual wield. We're not going to run through every skill on this because we'll be here for ages. Uh, it's going to be a super long video, and you're probably getting to the point where you just want to see the models. So you've got some more riot gear at 17 points, on which you get two of those. You get a riot shield at 8 points. You get the riot helmet at 6 points. You've got a first aid kit at 10 You've got a shiv at four points. It's sharp, so you know who that's going to be good for. If not, rewind the video slightly. And you get two shivs. You get one meds at five points. You get a pump action shotgun with a range of 20 inches for 28 points. You get a taser for six points, and that stuns, of course, because it's a taser. Um, you get tear grass grenades, tear gas grenades at 10 points. You've got another riot gear there. You've got another shiv, you've got another shiv, so four shivs so far. You've got a crowbar, which is a melee weapon, um, another set of meds, and then you've got the lockdown incident. The survivor sets off an alarm, all cell doors immediately close, any models in the doorway is pushed in aside in the direction of their choice. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, and of course, most of these are equipment, as you can see. Um, but those last few, so meds, crowbar, extra shivs, riot gear, and lockdown are supplies, not equipment. So that's my bad. So yeah, so you get two for supplies and two for equipment. That's really cool. That's going to add a nice little dynamic. Um, 
to our games. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a quick flip through the rules and look at the cardboard stuff that comes with it. And then we'll get to the main event. We'll look at the models themselves. Back in a second, guys. So here we have the cards stuck. You get yourself uh, six new health tokens and you get yourself six new activation tokens. Of course, um, one for each model that comes in the box and then one extra, which I guess is a spare. And then you get a little room, which looks like a kind of utility or weapons room. Uh, maybe the weapons locker in the prison itself. And then you get a couple of the fences. Um, in fact, you get lots of fences. You get some small fences and some big fences. <clears throat> now, a lot of people don't know this, or you do know this about me, I'm not sure. I really hate cardboard scenery, but this is good quality cardboard stock at least, and it's good if you haven't bought the actual prison. So I'm not knocking it too much. And then you get a mat, which what I'll do is I'll take some photos and I'll put them at the end. Um, but what we'll do is we'll go up and you can see around. So it's got the room and it's got like a prison-y outdoor exercise -y bit and then on the back it's got the list of everything that comes in wave three um so yeah there is a, a lot more walkers and things like that than we'd first anticipated um but yeah we don't want to see that we want to mainly look at the rule book itself bosh which is here so as you can see there to use the contents of this expansion you will need a copy of the walking dead all out war course set yes let's have a look and we'll have a look in a little bit of detail. So new actions, you can open or close at the beginning of the game. Some doors are closed. Model can pass through and open the door without penalty, but cannot pass through a closed door. Model in base contact with the door may open or close it. Then we have barricades. A model may wish to barricade a door so that it can still be seen through rather than close the door. This action may only be for performed when the survivor is inside a room and standing within one inch of the door. When the action is performed, place a spare barrier across the doorway. This barrier follows all, um, all of the normal rules for barriers, except that it may be smashed um, and has a defense value of white. Now, I don't think we've covered smash before in this. I have used it in one of my solo plays, which will go up on the channel tomorrow, I believe. Um, yeah, so that is a thing. Well played. So smash. Smash actions are often required to break open or close doors, crates or safes. Whatever the reason for performing a smash action, this method is always the same. The object needs to be smashed and will have a defense value assigned to it in order to perform an action. The, the survivor must be in base contact with the object and otherwise unengaged. Just up at the top here, so let's have a look at it. There you go. Um, the survivor rolls their melee dice, adding a red if they have an equipment with the bludgeon keyword. If the roll beats the defense roll, um, the smash action is successful. And if not, it creates noise. Once a door is smashed, it removes and can no longer be opened or closed. So that's fair enough. New scenery. Uh, new scenery in this expansion uses the advanced scenery rules from page 33 of the All Out War book. Below you will find details on how to use the new prison grounds, and we're not going to cover those, um, but it gives you rules for walls, cell doors, main doors, uh, rooms and cells, the tower, windows, walker entry edges, and then the armory, which is what that is, as I thought, and then chain link fences, which are one point, and they have the special rule of cover, impassable, secure position, and collapse. And I think collapse is on the next page. No. Maybe Collapse isn't in this book. Maybe it's in a different book. I read a lot of books. It might even be in the first, the main rule book. If it is, just let me know in the comments. I'm being a douche. Um, but yeah. Oh no, Collapse. There. <laughs> Ignore me. It is here. So yeah, so it gives you moving around the building, gives you some diagrams, it gives you the new Collapse rule. Any point three or more walk. sorry, if at any point three or more walkers are in contact with the same scenery piece, with the rule collapse, the scenery piece is removed from play. If you wish, you could assign the collapse rule to barriers or other similar pieces of scenery used in regular games. So you can decide. And maybe that's something we'll do in our videos. We'll, we'll roll for it or something. I don't know. Um, this scenery counts as defensible against walkers only and survivors do not take damage in melee when fighting through it. Survivors may not fight each other in melee over or through this scenery even if they can see each other so that's different I suppose you're not sh uh, sticking your knife through 
small little chain link fences and stuff. So that's fair enough. I have bought some barriers ready for this as well. So I had prepared. So yeah, so unless stated otherwise, in the scenarios, uh, they last until one of the victory conditions is met or the threatometer or threat tracker, as the layman call it, reaches its maximum. So yeah, so this gives you new bits to the story mode. You can add character deaths and injuries. And then it's got... As I recall, so this is one of the smaller books. It's got some new scenarios, of course. You've got Clear the Yard. We'll just tilt that up so we can see it. Um, we've got Unwanted Guests. We've got Cleaning House. We've got uh, Chance Encounter. We've got Mercy Mission. We've got Displaced Loyalty. And then the final one is Down in Flames. So that's fantastic. Seven new missions. Um, now you think that each of these books has given you more missions. So what, I think he got seven or eight in the first. Uh, wave two. Um, no, wave one, obviously, there's the Woodbury one, which is solo. Then you've got wave two, which is the farm, which gave you another set. You really start to build up a load of progression, but this is where it's at. This is our next unboxing video, and this is the one I'm most excited about. Welcome to Woodbury. Population 1,102, and coming soon. So yeah, it's only a little 20-page booklet, but it gives you a lot in there, of which seven of those are actually missions, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm sure you'll agree. Now, I'm going to go get the light box set up so you guys can have a look at these miniatures in proper detail. And then we'll come back, we'll do that, and then you guys can go on your merry way, because I've yammered on it use long. So, the first model we're going to look at is the walker. Now, these are plastic, and um, these are Mantic's normal plastic that they used for all their miniatures. The Walking Dead models now have switched to resin, um, and somehow cost the same but you get less models i'm guessing that's to do more with the fact that you get both sets of cards for all out war and called arms which i think is a really good idea before anyone thinks i'm shooting on it i think it's a really really good idea but it does cost you more and you get less models not the end of the world i know not the end of the world um but yeah so these are the plastic anyway and as you can see there the detail on it's really really high um, I'm a big fan of their walkers. Uh, as I said, this whole range is brilliant, really. I've only had problems with a bit of mismolding and things like that on one or two models, which in a range as big as this is not the end of the world. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and let you have a look at the rear. I know, I'm good to you guys. See, so yeah, as you can see, the detail on and the back's just as good. It's still got you know padding it's got some detailing where the straps are for the legs no expense spared as it were jurassic park style so the next one we're going to look at is the leader dexter uh, with his shotgun so yeah this is dexter he's got himself a sexy little shotgun he's your leader as i said before um, in terms of the model itself, it's a nice model. He's, he's very plain, but what really accessories and stuff are you going to put on a group of models that have been in a prison? Uh, so I'll just spin him. You'll just have to get a bizarre close-up of my arm. Um, I really have to find my lazy Susan. Um, yeah, it's a really, really nice model. Really detailed. The only really bit of um, mould lining is, a, as you can see, is across the center of his head which will be easy enough to take off um the next model i think we'll look at is andrew because i really like that model 